Hi everyone, my name's Colleen and I'm an educator from the St. Louis Art Museum. Welcome to We Wednesday. Today we're going to be talking about homes and neighborhoods. We're going to start by reading a book together, then we'll be looking at some art from the museum's collection, and we'll end by making our own art together. Feel free to pause the video at any time if you'd like to talk about something with the people that you're with, if you want to get a closer look, or if you need to gather some supplies for our art making project. So if you're ready, find a comfy spot and let's get started. We're going to be reading a book today called Home by Carson Ellis. And something that I like to do before I start a new book, or even if it's a book that I've read before, is I like to take a look at the cover to see if I can find out some things about the book. So let's take a close look at this cover together. What are some things that you notice? I see many different things on this cover. I see a bird's nest and a barn, a log cabin, a big ship, a beehive. What do these things have in common? Maybe you could talk about that with the people that you're with. Does it give you any clues as to what you think this book might be about? Let's dive in. Home by Carson Ellis. Home is a house in the country. What are some things in this picture that might make you think this is a house in the country? home is an apartment. One of the cool things about living in an apartment is you get to experience the other people in your building. I used to live in an apartment and an opera singer lived below me so I could hear her practicing her opera singing which was pretty cool. Who are some of the other people that live in this building? Some homes are boats. Some homes are wigwams. Some are palaces or underground lairs. Or shoes. They look like they're having a lot of fun. Would you like to live in a shoe? French people live in French homes. Atlanteans make their homes underwater. And some folks live on the road. What kind of people do you think live on the road? Clean homes. Messy homes, tall homes, short homes. What's one of the favorite things about your home? One of my favorite things about my home is the people that I get to live with. C homes, B homes, hollow tree homes. But whose home is this? And what about this? Who do you think lives in these homes based on what we can see in the picture? Who in the world lives here and why? is the home of a Slovakian duchess. This is the home of a Kenyan blacksmith. This is the home of a Japanese businessman. 
This is the home of a Norse god. A babushka lives here. So in Russia and Poland, a babushka is another word for a grandmother. A moonian lives here. I think it would be pretty cool to live on the moon. A raccoon lives here. An artist lives here. This is my home. This is me. Where is your home? Where are you? The end. So I want you to talk with the people that you're with about what your favorite part of the story was. We're going to travel to the museum now to look at some works of art. So since we can't go there in real life, what I want you to do is I want you to think about how you might get there. So are you going to take a covered wagon over bumpy roads? Are you going to go on a really fast motorcycle on winding streets? Or are you going to get on a flying dragon and fly all the way there? So I want you to close your eyes and imagine how you might get to the museum. And I want you to go. So, whew. Wow, that was a long trip. So I'm really glad that we made it, but we're here now. So I want us all to take a big deep breath together in and out. And let's get comfortable to look at some really amazing works of art. We're going to look at some works of art from the museum's collection together now. If you'd like, you can scroll down on the page to get a closer look at the images we'll be viewing together. Feel free to pause the video at any time to do this. Take a close look at this painting. What do you see? This is a painting of a neighborhood in Boston, Massachusetts. It's by an artist named Alan Rohan Kreit. He liked to paint scenes of people doing everyday things. What parts of a neighborhood do you see in this painting? Let's play a round of I Spy to see what elements of this neighborhood we can find. I spy children crossing the street. Do you see them? I spy a car that's perfect for taking a lot of people where they need to go. It's a trolley. Can you spot it? I spy a rounded green box that's perfect for holding mail. Did you find it? I spy a light that keeps the street lit even at night. It's a lamppost. Where do you see it? Do you have any of these things in your neighborhood? Now that we've seen how this artist has painted a neighborhood, Let's see how another artist painted a home. Take a close look at this painting. What's going on in this picture? What do you see that makes you say that? What more can you find? This was made by an artist named Horace Pippin. He taught himself how to paint after he was wounded in World War I. It's called Sunday Morning Breakfast. It shows a memory from the artist's childhood. What does your family like to have for breakfast on weekend mornings? Imagine what each of the figures in this painting might be thinking or saying. What do you think the man sitting on the chair might be thinking right now based on what you see? What about the two children sitting at the table? What might they say? How about the woman standing? What might she say based on what you see? If you'd like, you can act out the scene with the people who you're with. Now that we've looked at some works of art together about homes and neighborhoods, we're going to head back home to make our own art. So. Hop on your dragon, or get in your covered wagon, or hop on that motorcycle, and let's head home. 
So for our art project today, we are gonna be making our own paper bag homes and neighborhoods. And to do this, we're gonna need a few different supplies. Um, so I'm gonna be using a paper dip bag today, but if you don't have a paper bag, that's okay. You can use a cardboard box or a cereal box is another great tool to use. Um, you might want some glue or tape, a scissors, um, I'm going to use crayons today, but you have, if you have other drawing tools like markers or colored pencils um, or pens, you can use those. Um, and I also have some paper to cut up and kind of add details. So I have some pages from magazines that I ripped out, or if you have a newspaper or you know other um, paper that you can cut up, and I also have some colored paper here too. Um, so one thing you can do before you get started is you can take a walk around your neighborhood and look at the homes and the buildings to get some inspiration. Um, so what I'm going to be making today is a home um, with a pointy roof because a lot of the homes in my neighborhoods have pointy roofs. So to get started, uh, let's think about what are some elements of a home that we might want to include on our paper bag home. Um, so I really like big windows in homes when I see them. So I'm gonna be adding some windows to my house. And I'm drawing these on my paper bag, but you can also cut them out of paper and attach them that way. And sometimes when I'm walking around my neighborhood, I see windows that have like flower boxes with plants coming out of them. So I think I'm gonna add some flower boxes to my home here. And I want to remind you that the best materials to use for this project are the ones that you already have. So it doesn't matter what you have, you can do this project with tons of different things. All right, so I think I need to add some plants to my flower boxes now. I think for these, I want these to look, have some greenery. And I think in these, I might want some flowers. I might put some red flowers. I think I might need to add some green stems to those. my windows to maybe look blue so I might add some blue paper to my windows here so I'm gonna cut these out of my uh, colored paper that I have and I'll we'll use a glue stick to attach these and if you have glue, that's great, but you can also use tape. And something that I learned recently is if you don't have glue or tape, um, sometimes in your junk mail pile, which I am now calling junk mail treasure mail because there are so many great tools for art making in junk mail, is sometimes they'll send you envelopes in your junk mail and you can actually use the seals on those envelopes to um, attach things, which is another way to do it if you don't have glue or tape. So I've got my two blue windows. I'm gonna make these blue too on the bottom here. I'm 
All right, so I have my windows for my home here. I think the next thing I might want is a door. And I'm gonna use some of this red paper for my door. And let's see. And before you attach your door, something you might wanna check on if you're using a paper bag is to check to make sure that you're not attaching it to the bottom because paper bags have this bottom here. So my bottom is on the back. And I'm gonna glue my door down here at the bottom. And I think I might want some, maybe some windows next to my door. So I'm gonna use one of the sheets from the magazine clippings that I cut out, and I kind of like this yellow color. So I'm gonna cut those out. And maybe you're making um, a home that's not meant for humans. Maybe you're making a bird's nest or a beehive. So remember in the story we read about lots of different kinds of homes for all different kinds of creatures too. So that's another option. All right, so I think my door needs some details. I'm gonna draw on my paper here to make my door. So I'm gonna have a double door. It's gonna need a doorknob so we can get inside. And maybe some other details on the door. Now I think I'm almost ready to add my roof to my door here, so I think I'm gonna fold my bag here at the top so that it stays closed. I think I told you that I wanna make a pointy roof for my house. So I'm gonna use, I think I want my roof to be blue today. Let's see, so I've got some blue paper here. And if you don't have scissors, another technique you can use is ripping. And ripping kind of creates uh, nice different kinds of lines on your paper that aren't so straight, which is kind of nice for a roof because sometimes roofs aren't perfectly straight or they have kind of shingles on them that make the edges kind of jagged. So I'm gonna rip my paper to make my roof. it in half here and then I'm just going to drop it on the top here to make my roof. And before I attach it, um, something you can do, you don't have to do this, but if you have some old you know, newspaper or paper lying around, you can actually put it inside your bag to make it look a little fuller and to help it stand up. So I'm going to put my, my old magazine pages in here. I'm just going to crumple them up and I'm going to stuff them inside my bag. the top again and I'm gonna put some glue here on the inside and there we have our paper bag home Thank you for spending some time with me today here at We Wednesday, reading some stories, looking at some art, and most importantly, making our own art. I hope you had fun making your homes and neighborhoods, which you can of course continue to add to. 
um, as you wish. I wanted to show you some other uh, examples of materials you can use. Um, so this is the paper bag home that we made together. Um, but I also made a home out of a cardboard box and some old wrapping paper that I had. Um, and the last home that I made is um, more of an apartment building that I made out of a cereal box um, and some old tissue paper um, and some other magazine clippings. So there's lots of ways that you can do this. Um, so we'd love to see your creations. So please post them on social media um, and use the hashtag STL Art Museum. We would love to see your artwork. Uh, we hope to see you back here next week and everyone take care. Bye.